Okay. Hey guys. Um, and obviously you guys, welcome to our little vision team call. Hopefully this will be helpful for you guys. Um, seriously, this is kind of just a chat thing. I want to help you however I can. So unmute yourself, mute yourself if you need. But I kind of want to just really sit down and chat about your goals. And you guys, I know sometimes, and I do want to do one-on-one -on -one calls with people, but I also, it's almost good for you to like talk about your goals and have other people here, not just me, because then other people are gonna be like, Oh, you know, like so-and-so did that. Like I can do that. You know what I mean? So I think it's good to be able to hear other people's goals too. Um, and so last year I kind of worked with Josh Coates a lot, at least at the beginning of the year till about summit. And it, like, he is, he definitely calls them his puke goals. So he's like, if you set a goal and it doesn't make you feel like you want to puke, then it's not high enough. It's not a big enough goal. Um, and lots of times we set these big, massive goals. And even if you don't meet that big, massive goal, you're still a heck of a lot further along than you would have been if you didn't set that big goal. Because say you, I mean, your goal is to get success club 10 and you're pushing, 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 and you only ate, only end at success club eight. That's a lot better than setting your goal at success club five and not even hitting success club five. Okay. So you kind of just have to think that set big goals. And even if you're a little bit short, goals aren't meant to be reached, right? <laughs> even if you're a little bit short, that's okay. You're still growing as a human and you're probably going to be a lot further along than you would have been regardless. Um, so first thing, I want everybody to think, and I don't know if you've done it. So last year, a new leader conference we did where you had to think of a, a word that kind of represented your year. And last year, my word was like change and just being hungry for change, whether that was physically, mentally, financially, emotionally, change in my life in general, pretty much in every aspect. And like, it was a perfect for my year. Yeah. And so I, um, want everybody to think of a word for this year and if you haven't already done it um think right now um think about a word and I think I've been thinking like for a while and I think my word this year is going to be commit um committing to literally doing my power hour Monday through Friday every single week okay doing a legit invites power hour every single week busting it out doing committing to team calls whether that's personal team calls getting on team calls um I'll, I'll be super honest with you i get that lots of times team calls are at times that we can't get on or um you're at work and stuff but i will tell you 100 percent, my business started to change when i put like i used to be like well if i'm at home and doing nothing i'll hop on the call where then if people wanted to go to dinner or if things came up the certain night of the week that I knew team calls were like, I always said, I can't do it that night. I have work. Um, so I plan, I learned to plan other things around nights that I had team calls. So we're going to try to keep it super consistent. And I know we're doing the mentor calls. So next week, the mentor calls are on Thursday, but they're going to be in the evening. Okay. So people that are working, you'll be able to get on, um, in the evening. So that'll be good. Uh, that's okay. I need to remind the girl that does my banner to put that on because I forgot. I know it starts at 6 p.m. Um, Mount Center time. So that's starting with coach rank, 6 p.m., 6.30 is Emeralds, 7. And that's Mount, yeah, so my time, Mount Center time. 7 is Diamonds, and then 1 stars are going to be at 7.30, okay? Short calls, but super applicable to you and where you're at in your journey at that time, okay? So, like, just... And then every Tuesday, you guys, I want to really do a call. So two Tuesdays a month, I want to have a guest speaker, have somebody do, do a call with us. And then the other Tuesdays, I literally just want to do like a mastermind. Um, obviously, if there's something specific we can talk about, there's something coming up, we can do that. But I just want you guys to be able to like, if you're struggling with something, like hop on and we can just all chat. And it's so much better to, that's why I love the group threads is, other people can help with, with questions and you're not just like hearing from me 24 seven. Okay. Um, so hopefully that will be good. So I'm just telling you that I know that stuff comes up sometimes, but if you make calls a priority, one, you get to know other people on the team way more. And two, 
you're going to grow your business and other people are actually, your husband is actually going to see that you're serious about this. Okay. That it's not just some hobby thing that you're going to give up in a month. Okay. So remember that because <laughs> let's be honest, that happens. And men are like such like, I mean, I number people. So if you're not like showing that you're actually committed, they're gonna be like, what are you doing? Why are you like taking time away randomly from our family or from me? <laughs> Cause let's be honest, they're a little selfish. And but if you're kind of sort of doing it, they're going to be kind of mad. Okay. So just remember that because <laughs> I've seen it multiple times from spouses. Um, what else was I going? That's kind of all the really announcements that we have. If you're you start doing calls on Tuesdays, twice a month. So just our team. No. Yeah. Tuesday, every Tuesday. So 7 PM every Tuesday, two times a month is going to be like, unless there's a fifth Tuesday, then we won't do it that fifth week. But like every other week we'll do like a mentor call. And then the next week we'll do, I'll have a guest speaker or we'll combine with another team or something. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to stick to that. Obviously sometimes you guys, I know things come up sometimes it just doesn't work, but I'm trying to tell you so that you can plan it out. Okay. Um, so I'm just Did curious you see what time those would be at. So seven o'clock on Tuesdays are the calls. Yeah. Um, and then next week I have it in here. So next Tuesday, sorry, not next Tuesday, next Thursday, since this Thursday morning was the mentor calls, it's going to be, I know we're going to, Oh, just kidding. It's not next. It's not this week because we'll be at the retreat. So it's going to be the 17th. That Thursday will be from six, depending on what rank you are from six to 8 PM, depending on your rank. Okay. And then the 24th, we'll go back to the morning and then the 31st we'll do evening again. Okay. Um, another thing that's happening for next week, obviously every Monday, we all know national wake up call Tuesday at 9 AM. We're doing a getting started right call. So if you have any new coaches, you guys, I think that event we did the coaching event we, we just did today is solid. Um, I think the information that was given was super solid. First off, if you haven't watched Jalen's video, she's like super knowledgeable about how to explain Shakeology and everything. I'm like, dude, I need to learn so much more like about how to explain it than I do. But yeah, that was awesome. But if you haven't invited people to that, that are interested in coaching, go do it because I, I think it was, it was solid. So anybody that signs up, any new coaches, uh, this coming Tuesday, the 8th, 9 a.m. will be a getting started right call. And you guys, I know if you're at work, they'll be recorded. Okay. And then on Thursday morning, um, I know we'll be at the retreat, but we're going to do an Emerald call at 9 a.m. So I'll push to Emerald. Okay. So I'm curious though, who is coming to super Saturday or Friday this week? Or is if you're Ricky, Susan, I know is coming. If you are not here in Utah, are you guys planning on going anywhere? Tasha, I'm sure Diana is. Yeah, I'm going to Chicago. Shanti's going to be there too. Oh, yes. That's awesome. Okay, awesome. Is that Saturday or Sunday? It's Saturday. Saturday? Fun. Okay, that's awesome. I'm excited. I, I yeah, actually, I'm Shanti's the only trainer I think that I haven't actually like met or like said hi to or done like. Cause he was always kind of, he was a little MIA for the last couple of years almost. He came out with size, but that wasn't like, so I'm super excited. I'm so, okay. So let's just get started. I want to hear if you have your word, unmute yourself and tell me your word and why you kind of choose that word for 2019. My word is breakthrough. I wonder where my, because, because every year that goes by that I'm doing this, I, I feel like I grow, but not as much as I want to, because like, I, I don't know, I just need to, I need to punch through a wall. And I feel like I'm like this close to like being through a wall and I just need to get to the other side. So seriously, that's, that's my, that's my word. I think that's perfect for you because I feel like you're just like at the brim of just exploding in your business and even just with I don't know a lot of things that obviously the business affects in your life but yeah that's perfect I love that 
Who else? Mine's so mine is confident. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Mine's consistent. Sorry, good. I just got done reading the compound effect and um, my husband's always been a big stickler on consistency because he's not good at being consistent. <laughs> And so then I read the, read the compound effect and it's all about consistency. And so I've just kind of chose that one and I'm a good like starter, starter at things, but I always kind of fizzle out. So my word this year is consistency. Yes. And I think consist consistency is the number one thing, obviously in this business. And I think that people that have done it for a while would completely agree. And doesn't mean there's not going to be hard months and hard times that you're going to go through, but it kind of levels it out. And it just kind of shows that if you're the consistent person, all the people that maybe told you no or quit, they're going to come back to you. And if you're always there, I, you guys, I cannot count how many people that I've invited like two or three years ago that have come around so many, or that even signed up with other people that quit and that have come around. So uh, yeah, seriously. Awesome. Laura. Okay. So <laughs> mine is because I'm not confident in anything I do like at all. So I really just want to be confident and know that I can do this because my husband tells me all the time, he's like, you're going to do this and you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But I want to have the confidence in myself that I can do it and that, you know, it is going to work because I know like it's going to work, but I don't have the confidence that it is. Yeah. Well, you've seen other people have it work for other people. So you're like, I know it can. Yeah, and right. that's the thing is, you guys, I wish everybody knew me before I started coaching. Like, I was kind of a miserable person to be around. I had, I had no self-confidence. And, I mean, we all have days where we don't feel super confident. But, I, yeah, confidence and belief in yourself will 100%, like, whether you're going to su succeed in this business or not. So, what are you reading or listening to for personal development now? I haven't found anything yet. I was actually going to message you earlier, but I forgot. So, okay. so but I need a suggestion on you're like, fine. what. Go, so anything that's free, um, go to the, I'm serious, like the podcast, the podcast app, okay. the life coach school. And it looks, I don't know if you can see the thing. Probably not. I don't know how to do it. Um, it has by Brooke Castillo, Castillo, and literally scroll all the way down to number one and just start at number one. And they're usually about 30 minutes, but they're solid. They're so good. And it's free and just something you can listen to short. That's not like a nine hour book, but I <laughs> all of her books or all of her podcasts. So start with that. So it's just on the podcast app. Yeah. That little purple, it has the purple icon. If you have an iPhone, I'm oh, okay. It would, yeah. If so, you don't have an iPhone, okay. you can get it on YouTube. She's amazing. I agree. I love oh. her. Yeah. All of her stuff is awesome. And she's done it for years. So she knows what she's doing. Um, but yeah, that's an awesome one. And like uh, Ricky was just saying, read The Compound Effect because it's a, it's a short book, but it's super insightful. So it actually makes you realize how <laughs> the compound effect is. So that would be a good one too. Um. Oh, I didn't know she had a website. I mean, I assume she did, but that works. <laughs> Bridget said you can listen to them from her website. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. Okay, sweet. Okay, who else? I wasn't gone. Tasha? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. No? You can hear me? Oh, yeah. okay, good. Y'all know I'm an old lady with this stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my word was transformational, but I think I'm changing it to acceptance because like, I realized that like, like today, let me tell y'all what happened today. So, um, this girl that I went to high school with and I freaking love her and she's smoking hot, right? She just emailed me and was like, yeah, whatever you're doing, I want to do it. I'm like, what? So, <laughs> so, um, I thought it was transformational, but it's acceptance because the things that come, I have to be willing to accept that like, yeah, these like people want to rock with me. Okay. I gotta accept yeah, that. Right. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. That's perfect. <laughs> Tasha, you need to do live videos like every day, all day, and you would have the most crazy, amazing team on the planet. Well, Not that you're going to have someone anyway, but every time I listen to you talk on like our voice message thread, like I just want to get up and like start dancing or jumping around or something like you're super contagious yes i freaking love you yeah and i know you do a lot of your youtube videos which honestly in my opinion i would go live on facebook so directly to facebook because then people are going to get notifications that you're going live and you can talk with them as they're leaving comments go live and then when you go to post it you can save that video and upload it to your youtube later so it's there but I know that a lot of people are going to, you're going to get way more interaction on your videos if you just go live directly versus doing it on YouTube and then uploading it. Just a tip. Because I think Diana's super right. <laughs> like I wish that yeah, I, I... You know what? I did my first... I'm sorry. I did my first live the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> and it was like the little hearts flying around and stuff. And it was just me and one other person, but I was fine. It was all good. I yeah. was talking like it was 10,000 people in there, looking at myself and everything else. I'm like, I know whoever was on there. I don't know who it was. They didn't say anything. But I'm sure it's like, this girl is so freaking crazy. But. <laughs> But yes, I will do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. No, I love that. That's so funny. That's awesome. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, who else? Susan? Oh, okay. There we go. Yes. My word um, this year is intentional. Um, I just feel like with the time that I have to get things done, I have got to be intentional with everything that I do. And so last year it was push and I thought about that again I'm like no I, I know what I need I know what I need to do to push to get to where I need to be but I need to be intentional with that time when I'm working at yeah so that no, is I know you're super busy so you literally only have certain little pockets that you have and just yeah. having like that strict time just to be like hey I'm busting out 10 invites right now and I'm not looking at anything else or I'm not answering any messages and I'm just doing these basic vital behaviors. So I think that's good. Perfect. Um, Stephanie, Jackie, Bridget, Wendy, whoever. I don't know. I can't really like think of anything. Like I need to become more patient. Because I'm the most impatient person, but I don't know if I like that word. I'm not feeling it. Well, you don't have to pick one right now. Just think of one that you like feel like just you can focus on. It's not even like like last year when I was thinking change, I was just I mean, everyone doesn't love change, honestly. Like we don't love change, but we love the outcome of change lots of lots of times. So I was just like thinking like just learning to love the process of change. So the process of the grind, I guess. And so that's, that's why I chose that. Cause I wasn't loving the process. Cause it's not very fun when you're in the trenches and you're not really seeing, you know, so just think, message me when you kind of think of a word. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jackie. Mm. Um, so I think I'm just going to go with consistency. Like I just want to have a morning schedule with my workouts and be as consistent with my power hour as I am in my workouts. That's what I decided. I want to love them both the same. <laughs> yes. I love it. I, I, yeah, I have not been good with my like early morning workouts and stuff since December pretty much. And so I'm just like, that's, yeah, that's a good thing. And I'm, you guys get up so early, so we'll see what time I want to go. Um, we do night workouts, too. Yeah, crazy. I don't like night workouts. I just don't like 5 a.m. workouts. <laughs> just kidding. I did it forever. Like, last year when we did 80-day session, we did super early workouts, so it's kind of crazy. But, oh well. And in all honesty, we don't really start until, like, almost 6. Yeah, I could hop on at 6. That's what I could do. <laughs> I mean, there's that. 
six or six thirty. I mean, sometimes we start like three zooms because <laughs> it runs out of time. That's so funny. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we do a chat before Zoom, workout Zoom, a chat after Zoom. That's good though. That's funny. Well, that's why I like the community is fun. You're like, I can actually be friends with these people. It's great. <laughs> Seriously, it's the best. It's like yeah. I don't know. It's my favorite part. And that's why I need to love my power hour just as much as my Zoom hours. Yeah. I know you're on the Zoom workout thing, apparently. Who just said that? Yeah, who said that? Ricky. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, we yes. post it in there yeah. all the time. We'll post the link more. Okay. Okay, Wendy, I don't know if you're on. I know Bridget. Bridget, if you're on, you can talk if your kid's okay. Yes, we're, he's just to the point of dry heaving at this point. So. Oh, sad. <sighs> it's been a long day. Um, so I use insistent as my word because I always give up on myself like long before anybody else does. So um, I'm going to be more insistent to myself to stay on my nutrition and just feel like I got workouts on lock. That's not, that's never been my downfall. Um, and be more insistent on some of these people that try and ghost me. I'm not going to let them. Good. I love that. Seriously. <laughs> Drives me bonkers. No, I, I love that because I've gone back to like people that will finally sign up and I'm like, Oh, I message them like a lot, <laughs> but yeah. guess what? They freaking signed up. So yep. <laughs> I had some today that like, you could tell I had like every month they get a message at the beginning of the month. I'm like, well, <laughs> One of these days you'll answer me. You either tell me to shove my head up my butt or you'll say yes. So <laughs> it's true. Like, I think if they're like really not interested, they're just gonna be like, you know what? I'm really just not interested. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's awesome. That's perfect. That's a perfect word. I saw that you commented on my status with that. And I was like, I wonder mm -hmm. what she means by that. So good. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Um, I think with people who are ghosts, like just, I just started trying this out. Like if I see that I message somebody like, every month and they're not responding all just, just to make myself just I don't know feel better or make make sure they they know that it's okay to speak to me I'll just say something like hey if you ever don't want updates from me on what I have going on in my group then just let me know you know I'm not here to bug you and then like you know emoji or something so um I think that at least will if they don't want because then because I had one person last month last month who was like it's like stop messaging me about your stuff like you you should have like blah 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 like caught the message that I wasn't responding to he was like all right chill out girlfriend like you're the one watching my you're the one watching my stuff so <laughs> like you're uh, so I blocked her I'm like I don't need your energy in my life like, so that's why I just started like ending, if I, if I'm being persistent with somebody and they're not responding to anything, then I'll just kind of, um, add that at the end. Then it's kind of like the balls in your court, girlfriend. Like right. if I message you every month for the rest of your life and, <laughs> and you don't say anything, then too bad. That's your fault. Yeah. All you have to say is not interested. That's all. Yeah. And then you'll be like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And with that, um, what do you do with the people that you've messaged before and they'll hit like or send you a heart? And then you send a message again, they like it, send you a heart, and there's nothing else, but they'll send like a little heart. Like, what does that mean? I think people are foreign sometimes. That is true. Sometimes they don't fully understand. That is actually, I've had that before, but I would just ask them, just be like, okay, hey, I, I don't fully know what that means. Does that mean you want more information? Like, I, and then if they maybe like it, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I'd say I'm not a... I just keep it light, be like, hey, so I'm not really good at meeting, reading minds, lol, like, do you, did you want more information? I love reading minds, that's awesome. <laughs> it's so true, like, you can't read their freaking minds. <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that's, it, everyone's a little bit different, and just go with your gut, I guess. Go with your gut feeling, not like, oh, I'm nervous. I don't want to message them. There's the difference of being nervous and uncomfortable of just like, okay, this person's not interested. So just go with your actual gut feeling. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like I've almost like gotten out of my like 
being authentic, you know? And so now like trying to really like get back into it, I don't know, it's just hard to get back into that like feeling of like the, I don't know, not being salesy, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the holidays are a little bit harder and just kind of getting, um, I don't know, getting back into your routine and your groove helps because then you can, you have at least your routine stuff to talk about. But I think more than anything, if you're feeling salesy, then talk about like how it's benefiting your life instead of just jabbing invites 24 seven. Do you know what I mean, Seth? Um, yeah. I'm just like trying to like get back into the group because I mean you know I what's been going on and stuff yeah. and so it's it's hard getting like that like Jackie you know routine you know I want to get a good routine back <laughs> yeah and I would just post your routine and then just keep going with it and just showing love and other people's stuff without maybe trying to get them into a challenge group right away yeah do you ever like do you guys ever have a feeling where you're like wake up and you're like I don't really want to talk to anybody today yeah I do oh. a lot and sometimes like I want to talk to you guys because I know you guys yeah but yeah. other people sometimes I don't but at the same time I literally you guys this is this is one of my things like committing to my power hour and I think I might do like a post in team fusion where I post my power hour and you guys can do it too and just kind of keep it in the announcements where I'm just going to post my power hour every single day for my accountability. Like it's, there's nothing to it other than just for accountability because yeah. it helps me. And just this, the little ones that like we did forever ago from Amy Rada, I love that one. And I still do this one too, but obviously last week I didn't, <laughs> but, um, I am probably going to do that because this is, I don't know. Once I'm done with this, I'm like, okay, this is those days where you're just like, I don't want to talk to a soul. At least I'm doing just this and then I can put my phone away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just tell myself like, do this and then I can put my phone away for the rest of the day. And if I bust this out in the morning, then I'm, it's a hundred times better. So that helps a lot. I feel that way with students. So and <laughs> <laughs> you're like <laughs> someone's walking <laughs> oh I bet especially towards like the end of like semesters I bet you're like don't talk to me <laughs> uh, so let's get my grade up <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's really that so it's really once simple or twice. <laughs> yeah right Susan you're probably like the nicest teacher in the world <laughs> let's be honest I don't get nice at the end I get irritated and I went on a rant yesterday with my one class it's this one class I always go off on and I start doing personal development speeches to them and so I did have one girl she was on my softball team last year she's like gosh Mrs. Hatch like you could be like you're an English teacher but you could also be like a personal development coach you could be a health coach and you could be a PE teacher you could just do it all and I'm like okay 100% you're good yeah. you're totally good you're like I think that's a compliment thank you yeah well, so were you like what do you, I am. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I'm just not in a good mood with them right now because it's the end of the quarter this next week and I'm so happy that retreat is be when they're going to be begging at my door and I won't be there. You're like, sorry, I'm done. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Me okay. too. Okay, so you guys, much as I love chatting, I kind of want to <laughs> start this little... Let's do it. Okay. Um, Wait, what are we doing? Just kind of, okay, so I haven't made, like, I don't know if you guys make your vision boards um, or vision something because I, I like, a windows right here, so I'm making that, that magnetic board we got. I don't know what month it was, but do something where you see it every day, whether it's in your bathroom, on your mirror, something where you're seeing it every day, if it's the back of your phone, something, okay? Because if you're not seeing it every day, okay, I'll be honest, last year I didn't make one but I, I wrote all my goals and everything down like when I wanted to reach certain things in my notes in my phone and guess how many times I looked at it, I didn't. <laughs> so you need to make it somewhere that's out where you can see it and you see things, okay? Um, so I want people to, and I'm, I'm gonna do more one-on-one -on -one calls with people so I can really chat and help try to help you break it down, but I wanted to talk about like 
personal goals. So whether that's in your family, things you want to do with your family, with your spouse, um, because we know that this is like a lifestyle thing. It's not just a coaching thing because it coaching is not your life, but it should, should be intertwined with your life. Okay. Um, so personal, whether that's whatever it is with your spouse, how, you know, whatever, whether you have a date night once every other week or whatever you want to do, write these things down because you can't just make goals about business because you're going to, you have to have that personal stuff to go along with it. Um, whether that's like spiritual stuff, anything like that, write those down. Okay. And I want you to think of end of your goal. So you backtrack, think of end of your goal. So for example, it's easy to break down the business stuff. Um, so say you want to be five star next year. Okay. By the end or the end of this year. So end of 2019. Okay. You need to backtrack because I was talking to Marty and Jackie today and we were talking about how so many times we set these big massive goals and you just get so many times people will just completely feel overwhelmed before you even think about it. And then you never start <laughs> because you're overwhelmed and looking at this big massive goal, you're like, how the heck am I going to get there? Um, so break it down. Think of your, think of, so I want you to do financial, okay? Personal, personal life stuff, business, physical, and then like self-care. Please put in some, some type of self-care. And I guess I can go in with personal because if that's a date night or a girl's lunch or whatever it is, think of something self-care. When I did, was done with school, I like my self-care was getting my nails done because I have like these big man hands. And it makes me feel girly. So it seems so silly, but it's just how I just enjoy getting my nails done. So that's like something that I go and enjoy doing. And I don't feel guilty doing it because that's something that I budget for and I don't feel bad for it. Okay. So little things, please think of certain things, whether it's taking a bath once a week by yourself and letting your husband put your kids to bed, something. Okay. Um, I just wrote that down. <laughs> Seriously. It's so dumb, but I love it. Um, so think of self-care things that you can do. So for example, okay, so I'm backtracking. So say your goal is five-star elite by the end of the year. You need to break it down. And, and I want you to at least think of your end of the year goal. And then when I do a one-on-one -on -one with you, we can break it down per month, per quarter, stuff like that. So we can think of where you're going to be at the end of the year. Because when you say five-star diamond, where most of your coach diana and sue's one star diana's diamond five star seems like a long, long ways away okay um that's how i felt and i was like dude there's no way i'm ever gonna get there i, I thought that all the time um because i kind of thought it'd be like one star and then two star down the road three star but really it was like two star five star so it happens that way and i know micah told me that and i was like yeah right for you maybe not me so i just kind of thought that um but it really does and so I want you to think of your end of your, end of your goals. And then when we have our more one-on-one, -on -one, we can break it down. So five-star, your goal probably would be to be two-star by summit and versus, you know, and that also means you, obviously you guys hitting success club every month should be a goal. Okay. If you're not hustling your butt to hit success club and trying to help three people, um, it's going to be like a long drawn out thing where you're never hitting any milestones. And I know it's just a number, but you guys, it's a, it's a, an important number. Okay. <laughs> and just work your butt off to where you can find three people to help every month. Okay. Um, and I know it's a compound thing. Sometimes right at the beginning, your cold market, it takes a little bit of time to get them into like your warm market but it will happen if you're consistent. Let's be honest, you have to be consistent with it. So for example, last year, my goal was to nothing crazy to add to success club 10 every single month and to add at least five coaches every single month. There were some months that I succeeded that some months I didn't fully get that. Um, but if I didn't break it down, then the whole end of the year was like, there's no way I'm going to get there. So you have to be able to break it down shorter. And like I was saying, I was talking to Jackie and Marty. If you think about five star, you can get to five star if you add five coaches a month and hit success club 10. Okay. Um, or success club five and then help develop your coaches into leaders. So you just have to break it down. But when you think of five star, that's like, holy crap, that's never going to happen. But if you think of adding five coaches in 30 days and 
hitting success club five to 10 every month, that seems a lot more doable. Okay. Or that means like, do I need to connect with 20 people or more every single day? That seems more doable. Okay. So that's what I want you guys to do. And then next week we'll all, hmm, next week is the retreat. I'll probably do some, I'll probably start with like my diamonds and go down on the list. Okay. And we'll start with one-on-ones and then go down on the list with just goals and I can help you walk you through, but I want you to already have your goals. Cause I don't know what you guys want. Like, and try to think about like what you want for your family. <laughs> and it's not just for you and what you want for your team. Like I, I, <laughs> this is so like, this is how I thought you guys, this is how I thought when I started. So whenever Micah would be like, um, when, I mean, Micah did well from the beginning. She, she did well in the first, first year, first six months coaching, she made a decent amount of money. Okay. So when, and I didn't, I was not that person. It took me a long time to get in to where I even had any self-belief to do it. So when she would say like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till my coaches can say that they had their first thousand dollar week, or I can't wait. And I seriously, and she's like, cause that's when it's fun. And I seriously be like, roll my eyes and be like, yeah, right. You're just but like, that's not true. But you guys, when you guys do well, like it legit, like it makes you so happy and it's way more fun when your coaches are succeeding. Cause clearly that benefits you, but it's also so much more fun when like, it's not just me. I would way rather have all of you guys elite with us. Like that would be way more fun to me than just me up there. Okay. Um, so I just think that, I don't know. I honestly think there is something wrong. Like, dude, <laughs> Tasha, I love you. <laughs> that is <laughs> the thing is, like, I know people, Cassidy Brewer, not last year, the year before, she signed up. She started January as an Emerald coach and she ended that year at Five Star Elite. So I know it's doable. Jalen, the first year she signed up, she was elite that first year. Okay. So I know it's doable. It's just, you can make it happen. And like she was saying in her little video, she's like, you can't say that things are not possible if it's been done before. Okay. It's been done. So it is 100% possible. You're no different than anybody else. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Cracks me up. So that's kind of what I want you guys to work on. Write down things that you, you want. And obviously I'm, I'm probably going to hopefully try to push you a little bit because if your goal is to be Emerald by June, that's probably not a put like you can probably do more. I know you can. Okay. So I'm probably going to push you a little bit, but at the same time, like stretch yourself. Like I was explaining earlier, don't like push yourself to grow the most you possibly can as a human, because this business can help you grow in every, every area as a human. If you honestly like have the dedication and discipline to do it, get up out of, get up when your alarm goes off, you know, like put, this business, not first, but around other stuff, maybe like outside of your family, like make it a priority is what I'm saying. Make it a priority and your business will grow, be consistent and it will. So I'll get those calls for next week. But do you guys have any like, I don't know, questions or? I do. Yeah. All right. So from the time that you were like before you just like kicked a and I remember Candace saying something that you were like screw this I'm going for this or whatever what were you and then what was the sh what was the shift in your mind that was just like it clicked because it's just like that guy was talking the other night and I want to watch his video again that Micah did where it was like red pen blue pen you know and it was like all of a sudden you just there, uh, you know, I don't know, there was a change. And I think what was it mindset? Or what was it that caused you to change? Or how? I don't know, I just want to hear your process. I think I was just so sick of ending the year where I started, like, not last year, but the year before, I I'm pretty sure I started at maybe like diamond, or one star but Katrina quit. So my actual diamond, my first diamond quit. Um, I was just like, I'm not going to freaking end the same place that I started. I'm sick of this. And so that's when I 
I literally, like when I was pushing for five star, I wrote down every C, every coach that needed everything, every CBC. And it was, I'm such a visual person. I needed to see everything written out because then it made it like I saw it and I was like, Hey, this is doable. I just need, so every time I would do anything, I'd cross it off, scribble it off. So that when I like every week got a little bit closer, I was like, okay, like this is doable. Um, and it did help to have Micah be like, dude, you can do this <laughs> because I don't know if like, I really would have thought that I could because it like, I don't think I've ever added that many coaches since then when I pushed for five star that, that week, but it just, it was just more like I didn't want to end the year where I started and I was sick of where I was. And I just, I seriously was listening to PD that period of time, especially. And I did not care what anybody thought. And I still don't care what people think, but it was that mindset of being like, dude, I do not care if this person thinks I'm crazy. I'm going to invite them. Like, I do not care. So I think just when you have that mindset of being like, like they always say, like other people's opinions don't, they don't pay your bills. So why do you, why do we care so much about what people think? Why do we? Um, it's just more people are so concerned about themselves. They don't even, they don't even know what you're doing. Who cares? And so I think really when I was like, I do not care what anybody thinks. I'm just going to invite them. I don't care. <laughs> That's when I was it. And I probably invited tons and tons of people that I never heard from. And who knows if I got blocked, I don't know, but I just didn't care. And I think that's where all the PD came in and I really didn't want to end the year where I started and I was sick of it. <laughs> okay. And then did you like, did your, the way that you connected with people or did you do like a lot of cold calls? Like, did you just like, I did a lot of cold, cold calls at that you, point <laughs> where I was, like, um, like how, like if somebody said, well, I'm not sure. I'm no, I'm not interested. Were you a little bit more pushier? Were yeah, you? for sure. I was, and I think I know that that's kind of where it has helped a ton because sometimes, well, lots of times they'd be like, oh, I'm just not sure. I'd be like, okay, well, let me know. Okay. People don't let you know. Um, you, people already have all their like objections and reservations and other people telling them what they should and shouldn't do. Lots of times you just need to be like, you need this in your life. Trust me that this is going to benefit your life. And, and lots of times they like actually were like, okay, you're right. Blah, blah, blah. Or I would message people and be like, I legitimately do care about your goals and what you want. Like, let me help you because I have the solutions to help you. Cause I I've done it myself and I've done it for me. So I think just that confidence and when you're talking to people, will change, like helped me a ton because then people actually are like, oh, she's serious about this, you know? That's kind of what I, yeah. So I think. Can I say something real quick? Yes. Please do. Y'all can hear me, right? Um, I, re I, I agree with you, Kosi. Like even just the difference of myself from August, like in August, oh wait, let me turn the light on so I'm not looking creepy. Um, in August, the way that I talk to people now and like how confident I am about what we do, like it's a total difference. Like now I'm just like, whatever they come at, we, with, at me with like, I come right back because I'm so confident in what we are doing. And that has come from me training myself, like actually reading stuff reading about our products watching stuff like so that personal development let me tell you that mindset is like oh my gosh i don't put radio on in my car when i go to work it's on when i come back from work it's on like this is my job i have to get up at five o'clock i have to have my manifestations in the morning and i'm crying and i'm visualizing like like you said this is lifestyle like every single thing that you do has to be circle around it. And I'm listen, I am like so far from where I want to be y'all, but mindset wise, like I'm already there. <laughs> now I'm just, now people just got to come find me. <laughs> like seriously, seriously, no. seriously. So I don't even know if that made any sense, but um, yeah, I had that. I, I had that. Like, yeah, no, I love that. Cause I feel like people, 
are attracted to that confidence. There's such a difference between confidence and cockiness because I feel like when people are cocky, they don't really have much to back it up. But when you're confident with stuff and how you speak, you're kind about it, like be nice about it. But at the same time, like be very bold and blunt that, yeah, this is, I like, I have a solution for you. And I used to, and I, you guys, I still very much care about everybody I talk to, but at the same time, like sometimes you need to like squash their objections and be kind of bold and let them know that you actually do know what you're talking about. And I always tell people that like, I'm not, I don't know the most knowledge about all the products and everything, but I'm also like, be the, this is another thing that I thought, like, especially the last couple of months was be the coach you promised people to, that you're going to be. So how many times in stories and, um, your invites, you're promising, like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to support you. And then you go MIA a month later, like they're going to lose that trust in you. So like, it, even if you have to, um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, Laura will answer that. So even if you have to just, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, what was I saying, you guys? I lost my train of thought. But be the coach that you promised them you're going to be. So just show up, and that comes with consistency. But I think that that's another thing is like actually following through because, you guys, this is my biggest pet peeve when one of my biggest, I have a lot, <laughs> when people like promise all these things in groups and then all of a sudden they don't show up. It's like they just do it and then to make the sale and then they don't actually show up in it. Like that bugs me because you're pretty much not being honest. And I know it's hard to be consistent sometimes, but if you're promising all these things, like do your best to show up and prompt, like actually do what you promised. So that's what I'm... <laughs> Um, cause some I have my people, I have put my, yeah, yeah. And Bridget, you have to remember that you can't do it for them. And like, you can be their biggest cheerleader, but you can't do it for them. So having that, that line too, where they respect you. And sometimes, sometimes I don't answer messages right away because I'm like, I'm busy or, you know, so I think that just being able to draw that line where you can't do it for them, but you're going to give them all the tools they need and you're going to support them like crazy, but you can't push play for them. You can't do their workout for them, you know? Um, so Laura just said, my husband is listening too. And he says, I need help with this advice. What is what help with what exactly? Hold, hold on. You're muted. I'm, am I now? Yeah, you're good. I can hear you. Okay. So like, I don't, I'm not pushy except for with like my husband and my kids. Like, I don't, I don't want to like bother you. I don't want to like be, you know, like a pain in your butt. Like I just want to be friends with everybody. And I, you know, I care what everybody thinks like way too much. And I just, that's like, I needed to learn like how to step out and like, just talk to that one person that, you know, that maybe I think this would help or like, to just be blunt with somebody and be like look this works you know and I just am not good at that because I don't want to like hurt anybody or step on anybody's toes or I think if you just like you talk about that of being um like letting them know like hey I'm super nervous to reach out to you but I've been doing this and I think you would love it you know like let them know that it does make you nervous but also like when you because you've done a couple of posts um it's scary to make posts don't like I yeah because I don't like I never post anything <laughs> I know I told Micah from the beginning so I'm, like, I'm never posting friend. a video I'm never posting anything and I was kind of like a brat about it and she's like okay but it's scary to post but when you make those posts like comment in our in our message threads and say like hey you guys I just made my post will you go show me some love so that that does help because then other people see that all people are supporting you um and what was I listening to? I was listening to a Brennan Bouchard podcast and he was saying, he was talking about excuses and I should share it with you guys. I might have already, but he was saying that <laughs> for me, I haven't like people, I haven't at this point in my, in my business, I'm kind of just like 
I don't care what people think because I've already heard it all. I've already heard people say this is a pyramid scheme. I've already heard people say this doesn't work. I've already heard people say that I'm going to quit. I've already heard people, some of my best friends saying I don't support you. So I've already heard all that crap. So if I hear it again, whatever. Do you know what I mean? So you do have to kind of get past that. And that's where personal development comes in because then you're going to grow as a person and you're going to, you're going to have that mindset to deal with those things. Um, and then you're going to learn to attract those positive people in your life. And it's not just the negative naysayers that are like waiting for you to fail. <laughs> okay. Cause people are not very nice sometimes. And that comes with, in, that comes with inviting consistently. Again, if you don't invite consistently, you can't get those objections that can then just roll off your back. Because if if you get somebody saying, oh, like it's just one of those pyramid schemes, like she says, like you've already heard it before, who cares? And all those objections that you hear over and over again, they sting less as you get going. Yes. So, but you have to invite to get to that point. If you invite five people a month and you get five no's and that's all you, here all month, then yeah, every one of those is going to like be like a knife in your back because you only invited five people and you only got five no's. Like it's, you gotta get those little wins. Even if people don't end up signing up with you, like I've had so many people fill out my questionnaire. And so like, that's like a little hit of like, Hey, somebody's reaching out a hand for help. Now somebody like poured their heart out to me in their questionnaire today. And I sent them back the info and of course they have zero dollars and zero cents. And you know, you, like a part of you is just like, okay, what did you think this, you know, whatever, but they're reaching out your, their hand for help. And so you're getting that little win where you know that somebody needs your help and then you have that way to connect with people. You know that there are people out there that need your help. Even if a bunch of people ignore you, even if a bunch of people say no, there are enough people out there that do need your help. And the more you invite, the more you're going to get those little uh, wins as well. And you have to remember that the more you do this, you are going to repel the people that don't want to be helped. And you're going to keep attracting those people that do want the positivity and the help and the community and the friendships in your, in their life. Okay. You guys like, I, I mean, I had friends before, but I feel like, I don't know. Like I was still felt alone. Um, this community has completely brought me like so many just like happy friends in my life that I would tell anything to. So I just think that, <laughs> right. And so I just think that you just have to get to that point and it's a process. So don't like, I was telling you like, take it one day at a time. That's the biggest consistency. Don't share your journey, compare your journey to somebody else's. Um, just take it one day at a time, have goals that are going to push you. But at the same time, take it back to one day at a time. Like if you want to hit success club five, that probably means you need to invite 10 people a day. Okay. Cause you're probably going to hear some of those people are going to ignore you, but it's just how it is. And it's, you'll like, <laughs> like Dana says, it gets less, it stings less every time. Okay. Promise. So, well, I think too, um, I was listening, I just finished the book, uh, the Unf yourself and, and he was, one of the things that he says is he's, you know, I'm like, I'm hearing this. I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to listen, but this word bothers me, but he does say action breeds confidence. So inaction creates self doubt. And so it is true. Like the days that if I'm not being consistent, like if I'm consistent every day and I'm inviting the way I should, I'm like, heck, I'm going to go what invite people. And I don't care if they say no, because I know. And, and I was doing this last night when I was inviting to that, to the group, it was like, Ooh, should I invite that person? Ooh, I'm a little nervous about inviting that person. But it was like, I, we have a gift. And if that gift is something that they are needing, what, who, who am I to keep that away from them? And so that's something that helps me to keep going is that we have a gift to offer people and we just never know who, who we are going to bless their lives. You know, when you say your prayers or whatever, every day, bless for someone that you can search that is searching for help and that you're going to bless their life and give you the confidence to reach out to that person. No. So. 
Love that. So true. I'm trying to find a quote because about the consistency breeds confidence. And if that's your word for the year, you just need to set, be consistent in your journey and showing up for yourself every day. Okay. Um, literally that's where it starts. When you start coaching, that's the most important thing is showing up for yourself every day. Um, sometimes the invites aren't as crucial because if, if you're not showing up for yourself, what are you inviting to, you know, I'm trying to find that quote. Cause it was like, so perfect. And it's almost like, I don't know. I've heard stuff where it's like, stop. Never mind. I'm not going to say because I can't find it. Somebody else have any questions or, and yeah, Bridget, I've had a lot of coaches quit too. Can't tell you how many. I have no idea how many, cause there's a million, but, uh, some have come back, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, does anybody have any other questions? Comments? Uh, y'all can hear me, right? Yeah. <laughs> my, my daughter's like, why do you keep saying it every time? Because my computer keeps going on and off. So <laughs> they can hear you. I don't know. I I, I just okay. <laughs> I just share whatever goes on in my brain. So um the first three people I signed up, guys, they all quit on me like in a matter of two weeks. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I didn't even realize that I was trying to work their journey for them. So I was pouring so much into them that some somewhere along the way, I lost my own journey. Like, and it was only in a matter of a small bit of time. So like, seriously, if we like, we have to put ourselves first, like, oh my gosh, I know it with my whole heart and soul because when I'm like A1 and I'm not eating like a hog, smogs, whatever, I'm killing it. And, pe and you attract the people. And yes, you do have to invite. That is a portion, a portion of it. But when you're doing the things you're supposed to do for yourself, like everything just falls into alignment. And I just believe that. And I know that. And I know that was the reason why I lost those three people. I didn't, actually didn't lose them. They will be back. But um you know, it just showed me like, okay, this is what you need to be doing. Seriously. No, it's perfect. And yeah, you're going to have people that don't support you. Don't, I don't, it's just that success circle too, that they, a lot of the, most of those people honestly come around where it says, if you don't, okay, this quote, I found it. If you don't have confidence, you'll always find a way to lose. Everything you accomplish is based on the confidence you have in yourself and your ability to make it happen. The bigger the goals, the bigger the challenges. And I think that that's so good. Like when you're complacent in life and you're just going through the motions, lots of times you don't have a lot of like failures and sadness and things in your life on the daily, but you're also not growing as a person. So I think that when you do maybe get your feelings hurt or, you know, like things are hard, that means you're actually pushing yourself to be better. That's, I don't know. That's what I love is like, the, yeah, the bigger the goals, the bigger the challenges. And that's kind of every level is going to have a new devil that's cert, like trying to get you down. And you just have to remember that. But you're also, that's why PD is, you guys, I can't, <laughs> PD is the most important vital behavior to me. Because if you're not consistently doing PD, those challenges, those things are, that are going to happen are going to break you down. Okay. But if you can get past those and grow as a human, you, I don't know. You just, life is so much better on the other side when you can get past that. Cause you can write that quote for us. Yeah. The whole quote. I will. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's by Peter's actually, this was from the guy that wrote six months to six figures. That was a book I listened to. Like that was another thing I listened to Sue that you probably, if you haven't listened to that book, you should. I listened to that. I think two or three times back to back last that or two years ago when I was really pushing and it helped me a ton. 
especially if you're working and you have big goals like that. And the, the title kind of is totally different than what the actual book is about. Yes. Perfect. Um, I'll, I'll just send it to you in the thread because I can copy it, the quote. Okay. Um, but do you guys have any other questions? I need to get going. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> I have that book. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And that's what I mean is you need to spend time doing work, but also self-care. Okay. So that's perfect. See you, Diana. Um, any other questions or anything you guys are struggling with? Um, so like the whole, what Tasha was saying is, I think that's hard too, is like when you first start and you've got people and then like, they're not like doing anything, you know? And so you're like trying, but you do almost get to a point where you're like, I can't, I can't eat the food for you. And I can't, but then it's almost, you almost feel like you failed. And then the next person that you'd want to help you, I almost feel like, why? Well, how am I going to help you? I can't even help the people that I do have. So, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. it's just hard to like find what, what you're worth with somebody. Yeah. No. And I see, I totally understand that because I, um, that, that's hard to be like, Hey, why can't I help you? So that's like a gut wrench. Like I'm a sucky leader and a stupid limiting belief that is stupid because I just feel like, I don't know who was said like my guy, like being a leader is just passing on belief to people. And that's why like all we can do you guys is provide people. Literally all we can do is provide people with the tools, which we all have. Okay. Whether that's in the business or in the coach trainings, the like with on demand, anything, we all have the tools, but you just have to be their biggest cheerleader and keep cheering them on. And if they ghost you, like that's on them, that's not your fault. Okay. You can't drag people. Like you said, you can't go to their house and push play and eat for them. And that's just, you can't take it personal because you, they have to want it as much as you do. Okay. And you can't, you can't do it for them. And sometimes it's timing because I mean, Seth, look at you at the beginning, you didn't do anything for a while, but then all of a sudden you're like, okay, you know what I mean? So lots of times it's timing where people are in their lives also. And sometimes sadly enough, people have to hit rock bottom to, to be okay. And my life needs to change. I need to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's like, what's tough right now is like, I do have people, but none of them are like successful in their own journey. And so it's hard to be like, excited about it you know because they're not putting in the work not like coach wise but just on the you know health wise yeah so I mean all you can do is get them plugged into the group and make sure that they have like I mean just check in with them and just I mean yeah if they completely don't write you back that's literally all you can do I have lots of challengers like you guys, these are all the people that I've added, whether they're old customers or not. These are all the people I've added to our current group. Okay. So these are all the new ones that are highlighted and this sounds terrible, but probably two of those 10 are actually going to show up and stick with it. That's just how it is. And I don't know why, because people are lazy. People are freaking lazy. <laughs> and I actually have realized how like, this business, and I was lazy before too, don't get me wrong, but this business <laughs> has shown me how lazy people are, whether that's with their journey, the business, just whatever. So it's, just, you can't change, you can't help them with that. Yeah. And then like, sometimes it's like, you almost feel bad because you're like, well, I just told you this. And like, I have one girl that I reached out to so many times and she's like, I haven't even opened the box. And I'm like, seriously? You say like, why? Yeah, I'm like, well, just open it and see what's in there. You know, like, <laughs> look, I'm just going to have to wait. And I'm like, well, then I feel like crap because you just spent $200 buying this and you don't even want to, like, try, you know? And I'm like. <laughs> that's on them. That's what, like, that's when I'm kind of blunt and be like, okay, well, how do you expect to actually change if you don't open the box and read the instructions? Or, yeah. like, ask questions like, why? Why haven't you done that? Maybe they have a legit legit excuse but probably not they're probably just being lazy 
It's weird. People are, it's weird. And who doesn't open mail? Like, who doesn't open it? I open <laughs> everything. Oh, you get a the second I get it, I'm like, what's in here? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Not like, even in the I'm house fine. yet. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does that. So, or Bridget, what did you say? But why is to do shift Saturday with Chris the day after the finishing reset? Um, if you do it, I would eat something before. Like maybe eat breakfast, like have your eggs and toast or whatever, and you're energized, and then do it. At least so you have that in your system. That's what I would do. Yeah, because it's like, six, I think it's at 6.30 here since it's 7.30 there. So I'll probably just skip tomorrow. <laughs> just listen to the recording. Yeah. I don't really need him to kick my butt in the morning. It'll be okay. Yeah. Wait, are you doing his, what's happening? What are you doing with Chris? I did his power of I am in the winter. And then, so you get like plugged. So he does a shift Saturday workout every morning. He does. And mm -hmm. it's like a million burpees and yeah. I'm totally in that. I haven't been doing yeah. that. <laughs> Saturday mornings. <laughs> Woo! That's a good word. Just saying. <laughs> yeah I you guys good job for doing the refresh you guys I'm not gonna lie I would rather do the 21 day ultimate reset than do the refresh oh I totally feel like I'm starving <laughs> day two I'm, and I'm on day one and I feel like I'm starving <laughs> I'm just like I need more food <laughs> <laughs> it's hard I promise <laughs> the three day reset refresh is hard for me day one's okay day two I'm like ravenous so I get it. Day two is horrible. But I'm then, glad my kids aren't home again because I think I'd kill them. <laughs> yes. I'd murder them. <laughs> That's so funny. But it's worth it when you're like, okay, you wake up day four and you're like, I feel good. And then you can eat eggs again and you're good. I <laughs> lost five pounds yesterday. Whoa. Dude, what? Yeah. That was mm -hmm. way cool. Four. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to start mine Sunday, so okay. I figured I'll start at Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then have the retreat Wednesday, Wednesday, and then, yeah, so it'll be good. I know, that was partly, like, why I'm kind of glad I'm not going to, like, Super Friday, because I'm going to do my refresh, and I'm like, I don't want to, like, do my refresh and then do, like, a whole binge weekend. <laughs> so yeah, <I'm> like, I know. <laughs> I know. It's, hopefully, they'll have, like, healthy food, hopefully, but still. It's hard, like, traveling. I'm like, holy cow. It, you can totally eat healthy while traveling, but I'm so happy to be home. Okay, do you guys have... Oh, no. Laura can't find her skill. <laughs> That's okay. So doomed. I have any You don't want to look at them. <laughs> have you seen that meme of, like, Sarah Bullock, Sandra Bullock? where it's like getting on the scale with her blindfold on after Christmas break. That's how I felt this morning. <laughs> Ooh, I need to get on the scale and it's not going to be pretty. I know. I haven't weighed myself in like since Thanksgiving, I think. <laughs> Posey, I have one last question, then I'll get out of your okay. hair. Okay. Um, if you have just like messaged people or you did maybe even cold invites or if you had a bit of a conversation and they never respond back, do you get back with those people or do you not respond back to the people that just ghosted you and didn't say so, anything? So they're like straight up cold. I probably don't. Um, if it's somebody in a warm market or somebody that like how likes your stuff and comments on your stuff and wants information, then yes. But if it's a straight up cold, cold person, then no. But if they later, like maybe a month down the road, you see that they're watching your stuff, then yes. Message them at that okay. point. That's what I would do. Ricky, I would not do it if you're pregnant. Mm -mm. It'll make you sick, sick. Yeah. And you're not eating enough calories that you should be. So it's a, yeah, yeah, you need more calories for that. It really, yeah. It releases toxins. So you don't want to do that. You don't, you're not really supposed to do it pregnant or breastfeeding. So, yeah. So just FYI, new people, Laura, Wendy, this is the first call that I've seen, I've done that they've been on. So welcome. I'm happy we got on. Usually our car calls aren't this long. We're just kind of chatting at this point. <laughs> but yes. Um, do, okay. Any other questions? I'll let you guys go be with your families. But thanks for getting on. I know that Friday night's totally random, but I was like, this week was crazy, and I just wanted to do kind of a call. 
again, I'll post in Team Fusion, I'll post like a sign up list for kind of one on one calls and we can go over goals. But please, when you're like actually before you do the call, like at least have your goals right now because I can't make your goals for you. Okay. I don't know what you want. And think big. What? Read my mind. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could. I wish I could read everybody's mind. <laughs> Wouldn't that that would be like my superpower if we could have one. That would be it. That would probably be bad though, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if you want it in here. Isn't there a movie by that? That they do that and he can like hear everybody and what or what they're saying. I don't know, but I already see it on my students' faces. So I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. That's what I say. I don't care. Sue, so you would not want to hear what high schoolers are thinking all the time. So, <laughs> no. You know, I, some of them, when I call them on their bluff, they're like, I'm like, I don't care. I'm 50 and I don't care. So. I love it. I seriously love it. First off, Sue, do you have any of how many people? I'm going to stop the group.